Who'd have thought these dead birds would have turned out to be so helpful? Of all the obscure spots here in the nation's capital that might fly right over your head. You probably didn't know we have a national lab in DC dedicated to solving bird murders. It's bird CSI. <laughs> Okay, bird crimes might not be entirely accurate, but the people who work at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History's Feather ID Lab are detectives, in a way. The purpose of the Feather Identification Lab is to identify species of birds that are hit by aircraft, bird strikes. After being led through a series of secret tunnels and doors, I found program director Carla Dove. Yes, she knows her last name is a bird, and her team of forensic feather finders on the museum's sixth floor. How do you not get lost? in here all this time. I only know one way. <laughs> I've been here 30 years. Technically speaking, they're what's known as forensic ornithologists, pledging their working lives to studying the phenomenon of... Snarge. It's, it's bird ick. It's, yeah. you know, it's kind of a combination of the word snot and garbage. It's not unlike the splatter that's left on your windshield when you hit an insect driving your car. You may not know anything about them, but their research is present in just about every trip you take when you board a plane. Anytime a bird runs into an aircraft here in the U.S., the remains, the snarge, are sent here by airport biologists. Bet you didn't know we had those either. Every day is like Christmas because we do 13,000 cases a year, which means somebody has to open 13,000 envelopes and... <laughs> Uh, that's me, and I never quite know what I'm going to get, and it's always exciting and beautiful. The lab can get hundreds of samples in a week, but they're more than prepared. That's, that's it. looking better. About 85% of the diversity of birds of the world right here in this room. That's because this isn't just a lab, it's also the Smithsonian's bird archive. We absolutely have to check every identification. These collections go way back to the early 1800s. More than 8,500 of the 10,000 known species of bird in the world are stored here, which is how they're able to quickly find a bird match based on the remains the lab receives, with the goal of improving aviation and bird migration safety. We'll go through a series of chemical reactions to isolate the DNA out of the cells and then amplify the little piece that can tell us what species is wiped onto this snarge here. It's reverse birding, so we are trying to build the bird back up from the pieces that we receive. Thanks to the work done by Carla and her team, there's something out there now called a Civil Aviation Wildlife Strike Database. There's also a bird avoidance model, or BAM, used by the Air Force. The number of damaging bird strikes has gone down since the year 2000, and that's when they put airport biologists on every major airfield. Especially this time of year when it's peak fall migration and holiday travel is also on the rise, their data is incredibly valuable. We are so efficient, dude. We can do it in now like a day and a half. Remember the 2009 miracle on the Hudson? Who could forget Captain Sully landing his plane in the river? Well, Carla and her team were involved as soon as that all happened and learned a ton about Canada geese in the aftermath. Every day we get a new puzzle to solve. At the end of my visits, I realized that for a team that glides under the radar, Carla and her flock do some pretty fly work. Here inside the world-renowned bird lab at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, I'm Matt Koufax. Carla, thank you so much for having me out. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Yeah, thanks for coming over and safer skies to all who fly. WTOP News. For more stories like this, download and listen to WTOP Radio on our app or tune in to 103.5 FM. Three, two, one. Oh my God, he's staring right at me. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Ha <laughs> ha.